Sorry if you weren't able to join us in class, but we're going to talk a little bit about relative dating. Um, I'm also going to tell you what absolute dating is. And uh, yeah, when you hear relative dating in the past, all my students are always talking about like, this is where you have to go to like a different state and marry your cousin and all that. No. Um, relative, when we say that word, it kind of means like in comparison to. So let's take a look real quick at what relative and absolute dating are. Um, relative dating is just finding the uh, pr like the relative age. So you can only determine older or younger. Um, and when we look at rocks, you know, you can have these different rules that we're going to take a look at and see which rocks are older and which ones are younger in comparison to one another. So you can't actually find a number for relative dating. Um, absolute dating, which we'll talk about another time, is estimating an actual number. Um, and again, it's an estimation. It doesn't give you like the exact date. Um, so a lot of times when you see on like TV shows or something, they say like this artifact is somewhere between like 25 to 35,000 years old. Um, that's because you get a range of dates with absolute dating. You don't necessarily get a hard and fast date. So absolute isn't actually like absolute. So um, <clears throat> relative dating, which again is the one where you figure out approximate age, older or younger, was actually kind of started by this guy named Nicholas Steno, and his name um, was Nikolaus Stenson. Um, he was a Danish scientist, doctor, and Catholic priest. Um, we always refer to him as Steno. That's kind of like the Latinized version of his name. Uh, he's the guy who um, reasoned out these things called the layers of stratigraphy. And stratigraphy is just the study of rock layers. So, And this was the beginning of relative dating. Um, and we've had a couple laws that were added since his time, but um, he's, you know, he's he's the guy who really made most of it. Some of the laws that we're about to talk about sound very basic, but at the time, what you need to remember is Nicholas Stenson was in a, you know, world where everybody believed that you know God created the world the way it was and that it was not changing, um, even though you know they were seeing stuff around them change, whether it's weathering, erosion, all that stuff. So he actually kind of went with his eyes, um, and obviously he didn't lose his faith because of this, so hopefully if if you're somebody who's worried about that, you know, that's not what we're here to push you out of. So um, Nicholas Steno, he's very much got the Adam Morrison thing going on, fear the stash, okay? So here's the different laws. Uh, the first one is called the law of superposition, and what that says is at the time they're formed, younger layers of rock sit atop older ones. So younger is on top of older. Now this is just for sedimentary rocks, so the ones that go side to side. The second law is kind of related to that. It's called the principle of original horizontality. This is horizontal, side to side, okay? Rock layers that are um, sedimentary are originally laid down flat like that, okay? So if they get tilted some way or if they're vertical or whatever, that means that something has happened after they were formed. This next one, the principle of cross-cutting discontinuities is a really, really important one. It says if a fault, igneous rock layer, or an unconformity cuts across rock layers, those rock layers that get cut are older than whatever cuts into them. Okay, So think about like the sandwich analogy. If you have a sandwich and then you cut it, did the cut happen before or after your sandwich was made? It had to happen after your sandwich was made. So the sandwich is older, the cut is younger. Okay, um, A new word for us here, most of us probably remember fall. Igneous rocks, again, are created by volcanic activity. But an unconformity. An unconformity is usually going to show up as kind of like a wavy line on your guys' pictures. Um, but it's a large surface that is between two layers, and it indicates erosion of an older surface and deposition of a new layer. It's usually caused by like a glacier coming in and just wiping out the rock or sometimes sea level changes will, you know, just erase rock layers just due to a weathering and erosion. Um, but essentially an unconformity means we have a missing piece of the record. So we're missing pages in our storybook. Um, the next law is laws, law of inclusions. And that one says pieces of rock are older than the rocks that they are inside of. Okay, so I always talk to everybody like, think about like a chocolate chip cookie. If you have the chocolate chips and those are inside of your cookie, the chocolate chips have to be older than the cookie is, okay? They had to be baked inside the chocolate chips. So the chocolate chips, or the cookie, um, the chocolate chips are older, the cookie is younger, okay? 
And the last one is this principle of lateral continuity, which we're going to deal with later. It says that rock layers should go in all directions unless something gets in their way or something has acted on them like erosion, weathering. Um, we're going to use that later in class when we talk more about like biostratigraphy stuff. So, All right, so here's what I want you guys to do. Looking at this first rock layer, I want, or this rock profile, I want you guys to figure out which of the layers is the oldest and which is the youngest. So you can kind of number these, let's say this is one, two, three, four, and then this is five, okay? Take a second, pause the video, and on a scrap piece of paper, figure out which of these you think is the oldest rock layers, and put the oldest on the bottom, and then the youngest rock layers, put them on top, okay? And then kind of try and fill them in as best you can. You might want to go back, take a look at the notes of the five different laws that we went over. Okay, so just pause it for a second and then I'll tell you. All right, so the oldest one is this one right here. And then this one is the next oldest one. And then this, and then this, and then the youngest is actually this one. So let's take a look at this. Um, how do we actually know this? And I know I told you guys the wrong numbers, so don't worry. How do we know which ones are older and youngest? Well, we can use the law of cross-cutting to say this is the youngest. And then we can use superposition to say this one is younger than 3, okay? Because 4 was laid on top of 3. Now, when we compare 3 and 2, we can use the law of inclusions to say, well, 3 has to be younger than 2 because it has pieces of 2 inside of it. And then two, do that law of superposition again, has to be younger than one at the bottom here, okay? It's usually easiest if you figure out what your oldest layer is and your youngest. Those are usually the easier ones to do. And then you can kind of fill in from there. I usually like to start with oldest, but you can kind of do whatever you like. So um, we're going to take a look at a couple more examples here. So pause the video again, try and figure out which ones are older and which ones are younger. <clears throat> Okay. All right, let's take a look. So here's the order. F, J, B, A, which is an unconformity, that wavy line. Okay, so this is showing there was some erosion going on. R comes next. Okay, then X, S, M, K, P. All right, so most of that's pretty straightforward due to superposition. So F, J, and B, we can figure those out due to superposition. A kind of is also superposition. It's a cross cut, but it goes horizontally, so we can kind of almost treat it like it's the superposition law. But R is next after A, and the reason R is next is because this one is a real cross cut. Okay, it cuts across X, S, M, K, and P, so it has to be younger than all of those ones. Otherwise, they would have you know covered it up or something like that. So. Um, X, S, M, K, and P, those ones are all going to be in that order, youngest being X out of those, and then P being the older of them. Um, and the way I know that is because of the law of superposition. Okay. <clears throat> all right, take a look here. Um, if you look at this diagram, you could actually figure out what the ages of all these ones are as well. So this one's kind of towards the bottom here, next, 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 and then these guys. These are all in order, so oldest and then youngest. But then look at this. They all get cross-cut by this granite. So the order would be all of these ones that I'm kind of showing you right here. So oldest being there, and then the youngest one being that one up there. And then the next youngest layer would be this one right here, this big old granite layer. So this is due to volcanic activity, this one cut across here. Um, we have an unconformity. So there was some kind of cross-cutting there, like a glacier came through or sea level change. But then look at this. There are pieces of the granite inside this next layer, which is probably sandstone. So that has to show me that this layer, the sandstone, is younger than the granite because it has pieces of the granite in it. Okay, remember the chocolate chip cookie thing. Chocolate chips are older, so the granite's older. Okay, and then this one would be next, next, and then at the top, this is the youngest layer up here. Okay. All right, again, with the law of inclusions, because this is the one that kind of gets people sometimes. Here's two examples that show very similar stuff going on. But in this case over here, on the left side, this sandstone has to be younger. OK, 
okay? Because it includes pieces of the granite inside of it, okay? These pieces of granite had to be there, okay? And then the sandstone formed, taking pieces of the granite with it. In this case, over on the right side, though, it's the complete opposite. The sandstone was there first. The granite, which was an igneous rock, kind of crept up, and it broke chunks of the sandstone off. And so the sandstone was there first. Okay, sandstone's older in this case, but on the left side, it's younger. So take a look at those two. Um, and then this one right here. <clears throat> if you look at this one, try and figure out the order. Pause it real quick, and then I'll tell you the answer. All right, youngest is going to be F, second youngest B, then K, then N, and then A, because A cuts across J here. So then there's J, D, M, and then when you get down to all this stuff, just take a quick second look at your answer just to double check, okay? So again, the order we've had so far is F is youngest, then B, K, N, a, J, D, M. All right, and then the next one underneath of M is going to actually be this cross cut right here, which is H. Okay, H cuts across all these, so that's the cross cutting law. And then C, L, G, and then the oldest out of all of these is going to be E. Okay, so I'll say the order one more time. Starting at the youngest at the top F, B, K, N. A, J, D, M, H, C, L, G, and then E. So um, we're going to take um, just a little bit of time later this week to talk about what do we what do we actually learn from all these things. And I'm going to actually go back, revisit some of the pictures, and we'll talk about how do these things actually tell a story. So the first thing is getting your pages in order, which was what we've been doing with relative dating. Now what we're going to learn is what does this actually tell us about the past, okay? So rewatch the video if you need help with any of these. Come ask questions, and I'll see you guys later.